Hey there, and welcome back to another Percy Jackson video. And today, I want to talk a little bit about the whole casting controversy that's been sweeping the fandom recently. And specifically, the heavy vitriol the casting of Annabeth has provoked, particularly towards the actress herself. And honestly, before I go any further, I do have to say that this whole controversy is so deeply disappointing. For a fandom that seemingly celebrates diversity and inclusivity to turn so toxic at the drop of a hat about someone's race is sad. And it's made worse by the fact that for a long time, this was one of the fandoms that was considered less toxic, less bad, less likely to go insane and try to ruin a child's life. Ugh. But anyway, with that statement aside, let's begin to work our way through the controversy. So, as you would likely know having clicked on the video, in the last couple of years, Disney acquired the rights to the Percy Jackson franchise and quickly developed a brand new Disney Plus original show that would be adapting the first series of books, Percy Jackson and the Olympians. And to say that this news was received well, well that's an understatement. For years, fans of the franchise had to live with the very mediocre film adaptations of their beloved books that never made it past the second installment, because, you know, they sucked. And then here comes Mickey Mouse making it rain and buying up franchises left and right, including Percy Jackson. And so people were excited. People got their hopes up. People wanted a truly faithful book adaptation. And that's where it all started to go wrong. People wanted the faithful book adaptation. They wanted everything to play out exactly as written. The fandom had years upon years to delve into incredibly fine detail of how they would like a screen adaptation to play out. How it could make the franchise better including having everybody look exactly how they are described in the books. And so, when things started to play out that challenged what they had in their minds as the correct choice or correct appearance, they began to get a little bit upset. And by a little, of course, I mean going way over the line and beginning the psychotic personal attacks. But we'll come back to that in a moment. Because this brought us to the casting period. And prior to this, the world was peaceful. Or at least, the world of Percy Jackson. People were largely happy and civil, spitballing casting ideas and talking about how excited they were for the upcoming announcements. The hype was truly never higher. Rick was giving cryptic hints. Becky was retweeting shit left and right. Oh, what a time to be alive. The birth of a franchise. The rise of Percy Jackson. This is going to be one for the history books. Ho ho, and it was. But maybe not for the right reasons. And so, our first announcement was for the character Percy. And fair enough, title character should go first. And it was announced they'd cast a kid called Walker Scoble. A kid who is blonde. And that they had not considered dyeing his hair to make him look more like Percy's book description. And people sulked about this for like a day or two. And some, even now, probably assume that Walker himself is going to dye his hair because he's such a big fan or that they'll put a wig on him or they'll get him to use contact lenses, which can't be a problem because he used them in the Atom Project. Or that editors can change his looks in post-production. And I do fear for the inevitable reveal when they drop the trailer and he is the same blonde-haired, blue-eyed kid and you can all come back and call me on it if they do change his appearance, but I'm tending to doubt it considering the constant statements made by Rick himself that their physical attributes matter nothing to this adaptation. But apart from that, they've accepted Walker with open arms. Same with the actor for Grover. In the books, I'm pretty sure he is described as white, isn't he? But I mean... The actor they cast is clearly not white, and nobody seems to care. And that's a good thing, just to make that clear. Which is why the current vitriol is so surprising to me, because as soon as the casting was announced for Annabeth, a lot of people got really upset, very quickly, and they started giving their opinions on whether it was the right choice to cast a black actress when the book explicitly makes it clear that the character in question is a white, blonde girl. And look, once again, I'm going to reiterate. It doesn't matter either way. I feel like the actual appearance of the character is very secondary compared to how the character behaves, how the character acts. Does the actor bring to life what's written on the page and fully encapsulate the personality and mannerisms of the character? To me, that is what's most important, especially since it doesn't affect the character at all in the least. Nothing about her needs to change based on her race or her hair colour. Hell, the books are just words. Yeah, there's some art. But it's not like an adaptation of a previous movie or film that's already got a different visual comparison point. I mean, yeah, there are the old films, but they're still just based on the books, however loosely. So whilst we do have some visual comparisons to draw from, it's not as jarring as if there was a huge body of work that was just being ignored. But at the same time, I did initially understand why people might feel a small pang of disappointment. That the adaptation's not going to be 100% faithful. And yeah, I guess making a lone comment or post 
would have been understandable in that context. But this disappointment and backlash has extended far beyond one person commenting about their preconceived ideas about what she looks like and mourning that, because now it's fostered a foul stench of racism and misogyny. And we'll start with that first category, racism. And look, this is always a touchy subject for people. It gets danced around, nobody wants to admit that their motivation to complain is rooted inherently in a racist viewpoint. I mean, maybe they're not an overtly racist person, but they've certainly picked up opinions and thoughts that have been laid into the foundation of Western society. The idea that white people are the default setting, that they're the normal people. And look, I can already hear the furious typing. The furious typing of keyboards saying, I'm not racist, but Annabeth should be as she was in the book. And I'll say this, why does it matter? Beyond not looking how it was in your head, why does it matter? And why does the fact that it doesn't look like it did in your head matter so much to you? Why does it provoke such rage, such vitriol? And I mean, if there was any doubt that much of this is rooted in racism, look what we've seen since. Posts about the character and actress getting bombed with comments saying shit like, diversity quota, or hashtag not my Annabeth. What the hell? Not to mention the extreme harassment that's been leveled a literal child. A child, the actress is 12 years old. 12! Getting her TikTok account reported and shut down twice. And knowing the internet, she's probably gotten death threats and slurs chucked around at her, and she's had to put on a brave face. God damn it, a child being forced to confront a level of anger and hatred that many adults never have to endure. To the point that the actual author has had to come out and slap down the hateful bigots. And all because she has different coloured hair and skin to the drawings on the front of the book? Ugh. Oh. Yeah, tell me again how this isn't racist. To get this angry about an actor's race not matching up with the characters. I mean, there's no other explanation. It's racism, plain and simple. But it's not just racism, because we are playing bigotry bingo today. Because honestly, it also reeks of misogyny, because guess what? The kid playing Percy doesn't look like the book character, and neither does the kid playing Grover. But where is the extreme reaction? Yeah, I've seen some complaints here and there, but nothing like this. And so to me, this also suggests there's a double standard for men and women, or boys and girls in this case. You can cast whoever for the men. Doesn't matter as long as they act the part. But when it comes to the girl characters, ooh! You better watch yourself and cast them exactly the way they're imagined, otherwise it's going to be hell to pay. You need more proof? In the film adaptation, yeah, we're going there. Grover is played by Brandon T. Jackson, who is black. And yeah, at the time I'm sure there was a little bit of complaining. But when you see people talking about things they hated about the adaptation these days, I've never seen it appear on anybody's list of complaints. It's more about how he was characterised that people don't like. But you know what consistently appears on every list? The one thing that got so much backlash that the filmmakers, who seemingly didn't care about faithfulness all that much if the script is anything to go off, actually changed it in the sequel. And you know what that thing was? It was Annabeth's goddamn hair colour. <laughs> it reminds me of when they did that first casting of Cursed Child and the actress for Hermione was black and people were just so salty. It's such a weird thing to be upset by and made worse by how personally people seem to take it. You're not the character. And also, briefly back to the misogyny thing before we finish up, I can already imagine some people saying, well, it can't be misogynistic because a huge portion of the fandom identifies as a female. Well, guess what? Lots of women were opposed to female suffrage back in the early 1900s and parroted statements like, women belong in the home, etc. So it really isn't all that much of a leap to assume that these statements are not just rooted in racism, but also in sexism too. And ultimately, I think these sort of archaic opinions should have no place in modern day society. It shouldn't be this upsetting. It shouldn't get you this heated. It shouldn't make you want to lash out. And if it does, well, I have news for you. It is time to look inward. But I think it's made just so much worse that the victim of all this is ultimately a child who's trying to establish their career and have fun doing it. She doesn't deserve to get harassed and vilified so relentlessly. This sort of mob justice mentality needs to piss off. I just can't help but feel so bad for this kid. And I hope that the company really does take a stand against this issue soon. Good on Rick for saying something. And also there's one more thing before I wrap up. The question of, oh, aren't we allowed to have an opinion? Can't we respectfully make our stance known? And look, realistically, at this point, no. At most, it should have been a small pang or twinge of sadness, not because she's black, but because it's different from what you envisioned. Different from your childhood fantasy. But for it to remain more than that, or to consider voicing those opinions now is plain wrong. I understand there are a lot of children on social media, and that includes teenagers, but this applies to all. 
I hate to be preachy, but people need to be aware of how powerful words are, even online. No matter how nicely you voice your disappointment, that doesn't make it less damaging, and at worst, you've made the conscious decision to judge her based on her race in a public forum, and you've deemed her unworthy of playing a white character. And then on top of that, it simply emboldens more people to say things like that, which feeds back into the issue that we have now. It blazes the trail for racist opinions to get any oxygen at all, and that in itself is, well, it's facilitating racism. And I think we've reached the point where it's no longer acceptable to complain about the race of a fictional character. At least, I hope we've reached that point, because I'd be happy with that. I'm glad we're realising it's the 21st century now, and it's not like these are real people anyway. They're fictional characters! And what they look like does not retroactively change the words written in the book. It's not like this is a historical film where the races of real people are being changed. And so ultimately, I think that's how it should be. Casting on who is the best actor. Not on what they look like or where they're from, just valuing talent above all else. But anyway, as always, this is just my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What's your take on this whole issue? Do you think I'm on the right track or maybe you disagree? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.